Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Tamar Mizels, and today we're going to talk about the Lubavitcher Rebbe's response to the Holocaust. Previous generation in the Jewish Holocaust in the 1940s, not only were millions of people murdered and tortured, but millions who survived were also inflicted. Uh, either they survived the Holocaust or their parents, their siblings, their grandparents um, perished in the Holocaust, tortured in the Holocaust. And these people that survived came to the Rebbe, a prominent leader in the previous generation, the Lubavitcher Rebbe, with questions, how could this have happened? Please offer us some sort of explanation to this horrible thing that happened to our people. The Rebbe himself was greatly inflicted in the Holocaust. He and his wife were able to fled Paris last minute and arrive safely in the US. His younger brother was shot and murdered and his wife's younger sister Shana was murdered in Treblinka with her husband. Firstly, the Rebbe said, um, basically to people who were asking for an explanation, there is no explanation. There's no way we, can, we humans can explain the torture and murder of six million innocent people. There's just no explanation. It's God's job to explain, not ours. And just like we don't expect a baby to understand some great scientist, how can we even think to understand um, God and his ways when the distance between us and God is not even like the distance between a baby and a scientist, it's, it's infinite, so there's no explanation. Having said that, he did offer these people in several different letters a few pearls of wisdom that I would like to share with you. So while this happened to six million people, in essence, the Rebbe says, this question can also be derived to a single question of one person, where how can God allow one person to suffer when he, there is nothing to cause it, when he's an innocent man? So this is multiplied by six million, but it's in essence the same question as one. Abraham, Avraham was the first to ask this question, how can the righteous suffer? How can you, the Creator, allow this to happen? And the reason he's able to ask this is because we know that there is a creator and there is justice. So we come to him and ask for these, for the answers to these questions. Now, Avraham asks these questions, but this doesn't make him any less of a believer or, you know, make him not go in God's ways in any way, but we still ask the questions. Also, the Rebbe says, unfortunately, in Jewish history and in world history, there is nothing new here. In the first and second temple's destruction, there were holocausts that occurred and very few Jews survived. And those Jews that survived, the Rebbe says, they asked these same questions. How could he have caused this? So Jews back then asked themselves these same questions. But what's even worse, the Rebbe says, is that back then they didn't even have any hope. They didn't have any allies that they were waiting for to rescue them or anything. There was just no hope, just massacres and destruction. But we never lost our faith and we kept our eternal commitment to God and to His commandments. But what is different, the Rebbe says, is the modern society in which it took place. You know, this isn't some dark ages where, you know, they didn't know better. We're talking about 20th century Europe, Germany, with universities and music and philosophy. More than half of the people that were in the Venezia Convention in 1942 in which it was decided on the final solution, also known as murdering the Jews, um, more than half of the people were doctors, either um, doctorates, third degrees, or actual doctors. So basically you can be um, a poet, a doctor, and still be a murderer in Treblinka. Quote George Steiner, we know now that a man can read Goethe or Rilke in the evening, that he can play Bach and Schubert and go to his day's work at Auschwitz in the morning. And finally, what the Rebbe says is the most important element. In a letter to Elie Wiesel, who was a famous Holocaust survivor, at the time Elie Wiesel was 37 and not yet married, the Rebbe told him that remembering what happened and remembering the Holocaust is just one aspect. The more important aspect, he said, is actively fighting against the final solution. And to actively fight this, the Rebbe says, is to build a Jewish home and continue having a Jewish education. Personally, he told him, you must build a Jewish home. And he blessed him that this would happen and that he would have um, descendants. To quote what he wrote to him, you must make every effort to establish a Jewish home and a Jewish family. 
That will certainly bring about Hitler's true downfall, that he was not successful in his attempts at making it that there be one less Vizhnitzer Chassid. Ali Wazel grew up in a family of Vizhnitzer Chassidim. On the contrary, you will raise children and grandchildren. This is the true remembering of the Holocaust. Basically, the Rebbe says, whoever is bothered by the Holocaust and its effects should make every effort to make sure that we don't have any additional loss of people because of lack of Jewish education or Jewish identity. This, he says, is the true way to fight Hitler's final solution. Thank you for being here. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. See you next time.